Right. Hey. Right. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to Zebra Studio. My name is Molly, and it's good to see you today. Right. What am I going to be talking about today, or what am I going to be showing you today, or discussing about? I've been talking about corruption in Africa, and I've been um, looking at um, how corruption has um, had a negative impact to the people of Africa, different countries. I've spoken. I've spoken about uh, uh, Equatorial Guinea, and I've spoken about Nigeria, I've spoken about Ghana, I've spoken about a couple of countries. So what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about, hey, before I, I do anything, don't forget to click the button, don't forget to like and to share and to subscribe. Don't forget to like and to share and to subscribe and welcome to Zebra Studio. So what am I going to be talking about or showing? There's a clip that I'll show you which is really interesting from the ambassador of America, um, who is an ambassador in Swaziland, Swaziland, which is now called Eswatini, 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 that's what they call it now. So I'm going to talk about, well, I'm going to show you the clip and you do, you do your own observation and your own judgment. It's a very interesting clip by the ambassador of, of Swaziland, ambassador Lisa Patterson. And he, um, actually, I think he's sitting, I'm not sure whether he's sitting with a journalist from, from Swaziland where they're asking her about her, um, um, you know, about what she's been doing in, in, uh, in Swaziland, how everything has been going and what her concerns are. She really gets into detail about the constitution, about um, section 9 of the constitution of Swaziland, like section 9.1 and section 9.2. And, and it's a very... If you actually look, just listen to the interview. He, he actually speaks about the leadership of uh, Swaziland, the king there, the royal family. I <laughs> pose the question too. In November, I think last year, 2019, some way, you became very popular and very <laughs> unpopular in some circles <laughs> after saying something about uh, uh, raising your concern, which you had picked from a number of people that you were engaging with concerning the spending in the kingdom. Can you say something? What was going through your mind at that point in time? And how do you think going forward that can be fixed? I was really mad at that time. <laughs> and I'm, I still get really mad. And I think you said you saw a speech that I gave before I sort of spoke out publicly where you could tell something was up. And, you know, I have, I've, spoken to the king in private. I have made speeches. Um, I'm pretty well on the record laying out my concerns about, you know, royal family trips to Disney World in the middle of the drought. Um, the number of royal children who, for some reason, go to the UN General Assembly. Um, the the Rolls Royces, which I am still not completely convinced were a purchase. Um, you know, we, we've given more than half a billion dollars in assistance to Eswatini over the last 15 years. And, and it does reach a point where you ask yourself, why are we putting this money in? Why are my tax dollars going to this, my, my children's tax dollars? Heaven forbid, someday it's my grandchildren's tax dollars go to pay for health care in this country when someone clearly has a lot of money and doesn't quite seem to know what to do with it all. Um, some, of the, some of the takeaways for me from the cars. You know, we had a lot of conversations with people all different walks of life, um, grassroots people, people talking to their grassroots community, people very close to the palace. And there was anger, there was disappointment, there was, I, I think one person said they felt abandoned. And I thought that it was a golden opportunity for people to mobilize and try to get something out of this moment of collective anger, anguish, pick your word. And nothing really happened. 
And I think you're going to see another either gift or purchase um, that's going to raise that ire again. And so I will just put in my two cents now. And people have heard this privately, so I'll say it publicly now. Two things that I think could help Eswatini, and this is space where people could advocate. A law on gifts. Every developed economy in the world places limits on what their government officials can accept, even monarchies, um, because they're concerned about the appearance of impropriety. Pass a gift law, specify that it will apply to everyone. And I know I had one person say to me, well, what, dip, what point is there in that? Because you can't take the king to court. But I think you would need to start consistently sending messages that we're not going to have two sets of rules for us. And yes, we know we can't take you to court, but we expect you to behave the way the rest of us have to behave. The other piece is section nine of the Constitution lays out the royal emoluments. Section 9.1 says the king will get allowances. Section 9.2 says you can never reduce the amount of the king's allowances for as long as he is on seat. That section of the Constitution fundamentally takes away any power that Parliament has over the purse. And at a minimum, people should be engaged on well, gee, we think we have, we, he has enough already. We should place a cap on this. Or you change section nine of the Constitution so that there is actually some room to move it down if necessary when you are in times of dire fiscal need. I hope the internet has fun with that.